Hey Econ students, this is Jacob Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. Today we're going to find out what happens when you keep adding more and more workers and the law of diminishing marginal returns. Guys, seriously, we don't all need to be here right now. In this video, we're looking at the relationship between inputs, you know, the resources to produce things, and outputs, the things that producers make. For example, when a pizza company hires more workers, what happens to the number of pizzas they can produce? Before we jump into it, there's a few details we have to cover. First, keep in mind that there's two types of resources, fixed resources and variable resources. Fixed resources are fixed. They don't change as you produce more, like a pizza oven. If you produce one pizza or 500 pizzas, you still need that one oven. Variable resources do change with the more that you produce. So the more pizzas you make, the more workers, dough, and cheese you need. When it comes to producing things, economists like to differentiate between the short run and the long run. Now, it's not a set amount of time, like two weeks. It's more like an idea. A company is in the short run when they have at least one fixed resource. So today, right now, a pizza restaurant is in the short run because they only have one of it. The long run is more about what could potentially happen in the future. So in the long run, all resources are variable. So what if the company had two ovens, or three ovens, or ten ovens? The long run also has the idea of economies of scale, which I'll cover in a different video. So in this video, I'm going to talk about production in the short run, when there's at least one fixed resource. Okay, here we go. When you hire no workers, you get no output. But when you hire one worker, they have to do everything on their own, they can't specialize. Two workers can split up the work and produce a whole lot more together than any one of them could on their own. This shows the benefits of specialization, right? Two heads are better than one, in this case two hands are better than one. But specialization has its limits. As you add more and more variable resources, eventually you're going to get less and less additional output. This is the idea of one of the most most important concepts in economics, the law of diminishing marginal returns. As you continue to add variable resources to fixed resources, the additional output will eventually decrease. Notice that I said that it will eventually decrease. It can increase because of specialization, but you keep hiring more and more workers, eventually you get less and less output. Here are some made up numbers to help you understand the concept. Right here, this first column is number of inputs, in this case workers. The second column is the number of output, the pizzas they can produce in 30 minutes. These numbers show the law of diminishing marginal returns, but it's easier to see them by calculating something called the marginal product. That's the additional output generated from hiring one additional worker. Okay, pause the video, see if you can calculate the marginal product on your own. When you're a jet, you're a jet, all the way from your first cigarette to your last dying day. The first worker can produce five pizzas, so the additional output they make is just those five pizzas. But when you hire two workers, they can produce 15. So the additional output from the second worker is an additional 10 pizzas. This shows the benefits of specialization. One worker can produce five pizzas on their own, but two workers can more than double that output. Three workers can produce a total of 20 pizzas, but the additional output produced by that third worker is five pizzas. And of course, the fourth worker adds an additional two pizzas, and the fifth worker adds an additional zero. But now at the sixth worker, the total output actually falls, so the marginal product is negative four. Now keep in mind, this is not because the workers are lazy or dumb, it's because of fixed resources. Okay, here's a question. With which worker does the law of diminishing marginal returns set in? I want to be in America. I want to be in America. I have to be in America. Now it's not the sixth worker, it's the third worker. Notice the marginal product has been falling ever since the third worker. That's diminishing returns. It's not when it actually goes negative. That's negative returns, a completely different concept. Actually, there's three stages of returns. Right here is stage one where the marginal product is increasing because of specialization. Total product is increasing at an increasing rate. Right here is stage two because the marginal product is falling because of fixed resources and the law of diminishing marginal returns. Total product is increasing, but at a decreasing rate. Right here is stage three and the marginal product is negative, which means the total product is actually falling. This is because the workers are in each other's way and they're fumbling over each other and there's just way too many cooks in the kitchen. Bonus round! Okay, now hopefully you understand it with all the numbers. Let's take all this information and put it on a graph, right? Economists love graphs. Okay, right here is the total product curve, and right here is the marginal product curve. Now, you should be able to spot the three stages of returns by looking at the graph. Right here is stage one, because total product's increasing at an increasing rate, and the marginal product is going up. Right here is stage two, because the total product is going up, but at a decreasing rate, and the marginal product is falling. Right here is stage three, and the total product is falling because the marginal product is negative. Practical application round. 
It's important to keep in mind that we're talking about economic theory here. The numbers in real life are never as perfect as the textbook. But the idea of diminishing marginal returns is super important for anyone who just wants to run a business and figure out how many workers to hire to a government official trying to figure out the best economic policy. Think of a farmer fertilizing their land, right? A little bit of fertilizer, that helps. More fertilizer maybe gives you a little bit more output, but you can't get more and more output from more and more fertilizer. In fact, eventually the more fertilizer you put, the less output you're going to get. The same idea might apply to the government. A little bit of environmental environmental regulation might help the environment a whole lot, but more and more regulation will eventually do less and less additional benefit to the environment. Anyways, it's important to understand this is just not textbook stuff. This actually can help you make decisions in your life, all right? Thanks for watching. Till next time. Hey, thanks for watching ACDC Econ. If you want to watch the next video about economies of scale, click right here. If you like movies and you like economics, then watch Econ Movies. Click right here. Also, follow me on Twitter at ACDC Leadership. If you have a question, that is hashtag Ask Clifford. Also, make sure to subscribe. Yes, subscribing tells me that I'm making good videos that you're using, that you like, and that you want more of them, all right? Thank you for watching. Until next time.